Hello friends, well, uh, this lecture is a continuation of the previous lecture. Now, what is a truss essentially? A truss is some kind of a structure that is built of slender members, which essentially are axial because loads are acting at the nodes and the nodes are somewhat pin connected, so it's axial. The internal forces that develop in the members of the truss are essentially axial. And this is actually what we call as a truss. Now in this lecture, what I'll try to do basically is try to look at truss from a practical point of view. Right, try to understand, I will try to draw what are the practical truss structures that we see, right. And retract our way and go back to the idealized assumption that we have taken and see whether this practical uh, thing that we see in film, whether we can apply this idealized assumption uh, in it. Right, so here we go. For example, uh, I will first take the case of a bridge truss wherein, say, this is my deck, right. This is my deck and all the vehicles are flying on this deck, right. So, here is vehicle 1 going through the deck to and um, going out here. Now this deck is subjected to some vertical loads because of this. Because there are vehicles, there are passengers, there are maybe cows, dogs, all passing through this deck. Right. So this vertical load has to be transmitted and the deck has certain kind of members which are called stringers. Right. Which are essentially fixed at the bottom of the deck. Right. The stringer members are essentially fixed at the bottom of the deck. So in a front view, it will look like some kind of a thing like this, wherein the deck is this. Okay. And the stringer members will be essentially this. So this is my stringer member and this is my deck. And this is my top view, let's say. Right. So the loads has to be passed also from the stringer to some kind of a floor beam. Right. So what is a floor beam? A floor beam is some kind of a thing like this, which is somewhat perpendicular to the stringer. Right. So loads are passed from this stringer to the floor beam and essentially if I draw it in front view again this is my deck, this is my stringer and here are certain floor beams. Right. Now the next thing that we will see is that this floor beam exerts certain reactions on the members of the truss. So now we can draw a truss and the truss will be essentially like this. I rub this thing now and the truss will be essentially say like this. Right. So this is essentially my truss. And this members, this member, this member, this member are my bottom cord members. Bottom cord members and this member are my top cord members and this are my diagonal members this 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 and they can also be vertical members like this so this are my diagonal members and this are my vertical members so if you idealize this, it will be like this, that the deck carries in loads and it passes it to the stringers. That is, this is the deck, it passes the load to the stringers. The stringers passes the load to the floor beams. And what the floor beam does is that it applies this load at this nodes. Right. So this idealized assumption that we assumed in the previous lecture that loads are applied to the nodes basically holds true. Right. So this is how the loads get transmitted from the deck to the truss and this loads and now we can solve for this truss and can find the internal forces in the various members of this truss. So essentially a truss member has this sort of components. So if I draw some kind of a simple truss it will be having this but in this is a problem with pen so if I got to change it. So this is my bottom members and these are my top members. This is my diagonal and these are my vertical members. 
red. So, now if I apply some kind of a horizontal load like this, right, the truss will be here, it will, it will be like this, and also it will be some kind of a thing like this thing, right. So, this is also a truss on the other side. So if we apply some kind of a load in this direction, essentially, if I do not provide any bracing systems here, then it will have some kind of a horizontal bending. That is, the stock members will essentially bend.